Welcome back to another Crypto Gorilla video, the first video of 2024. But as usual, nothing in this video is financial advice. And if you haven't already done so, would you kindly hit that subscribe button? But special amazing opportunity, I'm currently giving away free NFTs in my Discord. You don't have to pay any fee, it's free to join. You just have to connect your Twitter to the Engage bot. And then if you support me on social media, you'll be able to earn points. And then you could use those points to enter raffles to win free NFTs worth hundreds of dollars. So I will put a link to my Discord in the description down below. What a start to 2024. We have crypto going nuts. I believe people are just trying to front run the Bitcoin ETF as there's a ton of rumors that it's going to be approved in the coming weeks, if not coming days. And with this, we saw Bitcoin break through $45,000, which is the highest price it has been in over a year. So it's great to see for crypto. NFTs, on the other hand, have been trading sideways. It's been a little bit boring. There's obviously a ton of upcoming projects that I believe are gonna perform incredibly well, especially gaming projects. However, it does feel like we're in a bit of a lull period where we had at the beginning of December or in the middle, Overworld, Poglin, Champions Tactics, and a ton of projects that performed really well. And lately we haven't had any planned mints. We did have on the night of New Year's this Mickey Mouse mint because the Mickey Mouse, like the old school Mickey Mouse on a boat IP became public domain. And one of the founders of Truth, which is the company behind Goblin Town, did launch like an open edition mint, which was capped at a supply. I believe these minted for like $2, but they ran all the way up to 0.4 Ethereum RIP if you bought at 0.4 because they are down 75%. So you're down pretty bad if you bought the top. And if I was a betting man, unless they have some super secret utility plan for these, I don't see why these would magically go up. So in my mind, these are dead and people are gonna forget about them in a week's time. But it was pretty funny to see when I woke up, I lost internet on the night of New Year's. I was home, I didn't celebrate, I was working, I lost internet. And then I just like cleaned my apartment and rerouted my PC wires. But this mint did go on, if you look on OpenSea, you can see there are three different of these Mickey Mouse slash Steamboat mints that happened. And now that Steamboat Willie is down bad, you have this other one, which is more like a PFP collection with different assets. This one has been pumping. It currently has a floor of 0.25 ETH. But overall, I don't see this lasting very long, but maybe as more and more IPs become public domain, we're gonna see some quick pump and dump NFT launches. But I'm happy that NFTs are relatively stable. I'm happy that the gaming meta is continuing to look extremely strong, as well as the token airdrop meta. And now that it's Q1 2024, we'll finally get to see all these tokens that we've been waiting for launch. So if we just run through this list that I've gone through quite a few times, one L37 is doing incredibly well. I know they have two upcoming mints. I believe the first one is in Q1 of this year. So I haven't sold my L37 yet. I've been holding it. My second price target that I moved my original price target was six. My second one is 10 Ethereum. And I do believe they are going to hit 10 ETH. But anyways, even though they are going to have two different tokens, we don't know when that's going to be happening. Here we have Overworld. It has dipped quite a lot from its all-time highs of near three ETH. The lower these go, at one point, I'm just going to have to pick them up because their token is incredibly hyped, or it was. Did people lose interest? I don't know. I got to look into that, but I don't think so. I think I don't know, maybe people are just impatient and they are looking to sell it and get into other NFTs. But the downside here is the lower that this goes, the worse it looks for Exterior's upcoming mints, the soonest one being Age of Dino, which is dropping on January 10th. And they are gonna be doing a Dutch auction starting at a pretty high price, starting at 0.6. So if Overworld continues to dip, and I think they have their reveal soon, maybe that's why they're dipping. But if Overworld continues to dip, that could potentially affect the the floor price or people's willingness to hold future exterior mints. So we'll see how Age of Dinos goes. It was, or it is incredibly hype. So I hope it does well. Their game looks great. But moving on, here we have my pet hooligan. I'm still holding mine. I have three, I have a ton of Zuckbots. In hindsight, I could have sold mine for 1.5 because they have a ton of carrots already, which is their token, hopefully launching in Q1. But I'm happy to keep holding on to these. We have Treeverse. We did get allocation to their token for my investment syndicate. I'm not currently holding any Treeverse assets, but I do know the plots are getting an airdrop. I'm not sure about the timeless. I assume they are, but 
plots are supposed to get an airdrop. Next, we have San Fran Tokyo. It's not in the gaming niche, but it is in the token airdrop niche. They haven't really spoken that much publicly about their token, and they're already at 0.6. So I think when they do, especially Animoca backed, this project is going to do very well. I'm still holding eight of these from 0.1. But if we just continue, we have the AOF verse nft or army of tactics nft for both fortune founders keys same thing this has been ranging it went all the way back up to 0.6 now it's back down i did flip like six of them i'm still holding two we'll see how long i hold them but i do think these perform well as soon as they announce their token because a ton of people are playing their game the game is really fun so i do think these can do well continuing to go down i'm still holding my shrapnels there was a really big dip on them both the token and the NFT, I just think they're good buying opportunities when that happens because their game is coming out. It is incredibly hyped. I know a bunch of people who have played it and they tell me it's legit good. So I do see these having their parallel moment where the token and the NFTs go parabolic. And then if we keep scrolling, we have Coco D. I have three of these. I might pick up some more. They have been ranging between 0.12 and 0.08. So if we get another dip, I'll probably grab a few more because this is a project that's gonna have a token that is incubated by Cedify. So those are all the ones I'm holding or I'm looking at. One that I just purchased is going to be Pixelmon. It's here on this list. At these prices, 1.8. I bought three Pixelmon monsters or the Genesis nft i also bought three of their pixelmon trainers at 0.35 and i had been eyeing these for quite some time however if you look to twitter they tweeted this out on monday referring to the token saying that you're going to want to either be holding or know somebody who is holding and they say it's going to be very important very soon now first off very soon or soon i always get flashbacks to meme land the whole soon and it took a long time so negative flashbacks but i also got positive flashbacks to meme land because if they end up doing something like meme land did for the referral system with those waitlist codes that made the nfts go parabolic and you were also able to sell those waitlist codes for up to i believe 0.04 ethereum per code now, in hindsight, sweeping captains at three to four ETH was the play. It was incredibly good if you did that because getting a guaranteed pre-sale spot or just getting codes, just getting as many pre-sale spots as you can was incredibly profitable because you could put in $300 into pre-sale and it is currently worth, if you didn't sell any of it, it's currently worth like $8,000. Now, of course, a big portion of that is vested. It's locked up over time and you get these unlocks daily. But on day one, your unlock was already crazy in profit. So the rest that you're holding that is vested is pure profit. Now, I don't know if Pixelmon plans to do the same. I don't know what their terms are going to be compared to meme land, but this could end up being an incredible play now that's more long term right waiting for the token waiting for a potential pre-sale but even as a short-term play if there is this whole pre-sale narrative i think it could be really good for the nfts because if you look at meme land if you look at grapes right grapes had pre-sale allocation but they also had these tickets that you can give away like they see in the tweet you want to know somebody who has the nft so just that whole narrative i feel that these pixelmon nfts can go up in value. Now, the other thing that Pixelmon is doing is they're releasing their second hyper casual game called Pixel Pals. And I will be covering this project in more detail in the near future. But for now, what I can tell you is, yes, you will be able to farm the Mon token, the Pixelmon token with this game. It's absolutely free to play. You don't need to hold any assets. It's not token gated or roll gated or whatever. You don't need whitelist to play this game. And the fact that they're pushing out this whole narrative, a farming system, I assume you're going to have to do some stuff on social media, which if they want to get their token on some of the biggest exchanges, they need that social media presence because all these exchanges look for that. But this just tells me their token is going to be coming sooner rather than later. So I just wanted to get my exposure to their project. I'm also going to be doing some giveaways for their Pixel Pals game in my server, but entirely free to participate in. So make sure you join my Discord in the description down below. Now, speaking of getting free stuff and free money, I just claimed the LFG token, which stands for less fees and gas. 
I've only done it on one wallet so far, but mine was worth almost two Solana. And the idea behind this claim is that they check how much gas you've spent on Ethereum. So if you don't have a lot of transactions, if you haven't spent a lot in gas, it's probably not worth claiming. But if you have, you might be able to claim a decent amount of LFG token, which you could then trade for Solana, which I think is their plan. Like, I don't think anybody's going to hold the LFG token for life, but it's kind of like this Trojan horse where they get you onto the Solana ecosystem, right? You might trade your LFG token for Solana. And unless you have a crazy high amount, you want to convert in back into ETH or maybe into fiat, you'll probably just end up keeping it on Solana. So a great Trojan horse, because then you might actually, now you have Solana exposure, right? Now you might buy a Solana meme coin, or you might go and mint an NFT or buy an NFT on the secondary market. So overall, I really like this. Obviously, I really like free money, but this was a cool idea. I'm gonna put the website in the description down below so you don't get scammed. If you wanna trade it, I'll include two websites down below, Birdseye and Orca. So yeah, check it out. Hopefully you got some free money. Next up, let's talk about some upcoming projects and maybe a meta that I look at as a content creator because I have to work with all these projects and work with all these teams. And it kind of just makes my life easier. Let me know if you guys look at this kind of stuff as well in the comments down below. But if you remember in my last video, because I know you watched it, right? Uh, I'll link it up above if you didn't, no pressure. But in my last video, I mentioned the projects that are, or like the narrative around projects that are backed by Cetify and Animoca and Exterior, right? Under those umbrellas. Well, another thing that I noticed, again, because I work with a lot of these teams is projects that work with the same agency or the same collab team or marketing team. Because with all the experience they've gotten, they now know all the different groups, they know all the KOLs, and they understand how to get a project hyped. And this is one of the reasons I always say networking is very important and building relationships with these agencies, building relationships with collab managers, because they're going to be handling more and more projects, especially as we go into the bull market and projects look for their expertise to help them out. So you might recognize some of these people. You have like Abi who handled the AOF first mint, and he's now working on Play Ember with Open the Fridge, which is an incredibly hyped free mint. So if you want whitelist for that, be sure to bug them. You also got Logan and Master Chief from Ignite, and they handled the recent overworld whitelist and no, they weren't the ones who were responsible for the overallocation. So please don't be mad at them, but they'll be handling more and more projects in the future. So again, it's always good Good to build relationships with these people, right? So some of the agencies that I am frequently working with, you have Inferno Labs, who you might recognize from recent launches like Vendetta Games and Farcana, which both performed incredibly well. So I'm really happy we managed to get collabs for both of these in my group, Guerrilla Labs. But if we jump to the Inferno Labs Twitter, you could see all the projects that they're going to be working with next. So they have BitCrunch, which is a free mint that is backed by Animoca Brands. You have Kiraverse. This one looks really cool. I'm excited to try out the gameplay for this one. I'll definitely be covering it in the future. It's going to be a free mint, so no risk. Like I mentioned, you have Farcana, who do have an upcoming low supply, but BRC20 mint that is going to get you access to their FAR token airdrop. You also have Dark Frontier, another game, another free mint. Also want to test this one out. They also have PVP, which I believe we're going to be doing an AMA with on my Twitter, but you can clearly see there's a niche here, right? It's gaming, which is the meta. So the odds that some of these are going to cook is high in my opinion, and they're all free mints. So there's zero risk. So personally, I'd recommend getting whitelist for all of these, and I will do my best to cover them in future videos. There's just a ton of content and a ton to go through. Now, another agency that I work with a lot is Arcadia. They're working on upcoming projects like Somo, which is incredibly hyped and one that I'm personally looking forward to. They also handle launches for block games which did extremely well i'm really happy we got whitelist for that as well in Guerrilla Labs, but they also have an upcoming token. They also handled Portal, which I'm sure you heard of all over the timeline. But the latest project that they're working on is Kibi. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Kibi, which just announced a partnership with Binance. So I don't know the extent to which this partnership goes. If Binance is just going to be using Kibi as their own personal tool for a loyalty program that they extend to their customers, 
which is already a huge deal, or if they're going to be offering this to all of their incubations and all of the tokens that they launch, right? There's a lot of possibilities. I'm just speculating, but it would make sense as Kibi has a plug and play tool where a company can start using Kibi within a matter of hours for their own personal loyalty program. And then their customers can start to earn rewards, which can be traded for points, crypto, NFTs, cash, whatever. Now Kibi will have both their own token as well as an NFT. They call it their Genesis NFT. So I'm assuming there might be more NFTs in the future. However, being a Genesis NFT, it is going to have a small supply. So it is gonna be on the harder side to get. However, it is worth getting because one, it's a free mint. So again, no risk, but even better, they just revealed the first utility of the NFT, which is going to get you an allocation for their upcoming token airdrop. So not only is it a free mint, they are literally giving you free money just for holding. Now, the other utilities for this NFT are still encrypted. If I had to guess, I would say maybe there's going to be some sort of staking where you get a yield in the token, as well as maybe some benefits with the loyalty program, seeing as they have a ton of partners, maybe you get more discounts or higher rewards. Now, if you want to try to get whitelist, I'm going to put a raffle link in the description down below. And we'll also have whitelist spots for my community, Gorilla Labs. Now, last but not least, the Say ecosystem has been popping off. I don't really want to talk about projects because it's it's very new. Like literally anything could pop off. There could be a ton of rugs. And this is really just a degen space where you're gambling and YOLOing your money. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. The tech still really sucks. It's super early. Like trying to use this stuff is a pain. The other day I was trying to get onto a marketplace. There was a wait time of two hours. Like, I don't know, just put more money into your servers instead of making your customers wait two hours. But sometimes being this early is good. If you look at ordinals at the beginning, you have to trade on Google spreadsheets and the people who are doing that are incredibly in profit, especially if they held some of those early NFTs. So if you want to get started and say, here is a TLDR brought to you by Captain Y. So make sure you go and follow him on Twitter. So the wallet I use is Compass. I actually imported my Kepler wallet into Compass, but I believe you could just use Compass straight up. If you want to bridge your funds from ETH or Solana, you can use Rockets. However, personally, I just used a centralized exchange. You could find which exchange that works for you on CoinMarketCap. The DEX for trading tokens is Astroport. The exchange for trading NFTs is Pallet Exchange. The top meme coins at this moment, which could change by tomorrow, by the time you watch this video, are Saiyan and Sega. Both plays on the word say. And the top NFT projects are Colony, Webump, and Saiyans. Now, like I said, projects are pretty hit or miss. Some upcoming ones, there's Say Rocks. There's another version of Saiyans, which is just spelt differently, which is like Super Saiyans from Dragon Ball. And while I can't vouch for any of these, it doesn't hurt to get whitelist. Now, I did notice Cool Times, who is a fellow YouTuber, has been posting a lot lately about Say projects. He's even been running spaces. So definitely check out his Twitter to get more information on Say projects. But not to be a hater on Say, this does remind me a lot of Aptos, which like who still trades NFTs on Aptos, you know? It kind of lasted for a couple weeks and then it just died out. So I hope that doesn't happen for this ecosystem or this blockchain, but I'm personally not throwing my life savings into this. I just put a couple thousand bucks. I'm going to gabble on some projects, hopefully make a two, five, a hundred X on meme coins or NFTs, and then just pull my money out and put it back into gaming tokens or Solana or ETH or whatever. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, would you kindly hit that subscribe button, smash that bell notification. I read all the comments from my last YouTube video where everybody was like, keep making YouTube, keep making YouTube. I have no plans to stop making YouTube. I just, I wanna put focus on Twitter as well. I'm just gonna do both, right? I'm gonna do it all. But uh, I hear you guys, so I will try to produce more and more YouTube content. I think I already told you to subscribe. So thank you for watching another Crypto Gorilla video. Peace. Uh -uh.